All right. So uh, what we've established is that sometimes, uh, well, that there is a difference between killing and letting someone die or doing harm versus allowing harm. And perhaps we've even established that morally we have come to accept that actively killing or actively harming is far worse or much worse um, than allowing harm or letting someone die. But, and this is where James Rachel's paper comes into play, Rachel objects with this. He disagrees. He believes that there is no morally relevant difference between doing harm and allowing it. Right? And, and, and in, in order to defend this stance, he asks us to consider the following two cases. So he tells us that there are two people. There's Smith and there's Jones. Um, and this will be the bathtub stories. So Smith, an individual who is named Smith, Smith stands to gain a large inheritance if anything should happen to his six-year-old cousin. One evening, while the child is taking a bath, Smith sneaks into the bathroom and drowns the child. Right? He actively kills this child in order to uh, gain a large inheritance. Now, the second story, the story of Jones, Jones also stands to gain if anything should happen to his six-year-old cousin. One evening, while the child is taking a bath, Jones sneaks into the bathroom to drown the child. However, just as he enters, the child slips and hits his head, falling face down into the water. Jones is delighted. He stands by, ready to push the child's head back down if necessary, but it is not necessary. The child drowns. So in this case, Jones isn't actively causing harm. He's just passively allowing it to happen. So Smith is doing harm or killing the child. Meanwhile, Jones is merely allowing harm or letting the child die. If there were a morally relevant distinction here, we ought to think that what Smith does is far worse morally than what Jones does. Right? Are you more appalled by what Smith did or what, by what Jones did? I think, though, that we are more appalled by Jones because Jones had a chance to save and cho chose not to. What Smith and Jones do seems to be equally morally wrong. Do you agree with that? Are they both morally equivalent monsters, or is one of them worse than the other? Therefore, Rachels argues the do-allow distinction is not a morally relevant one. So if we were to rephrase this in argument form, we would say that premise one, if killing were morally much worse than letting die, then what Smith does to the child would be morally much worse than what Jones does to the child. Premise number two, what, what Smith does is not morally much worse than what Jones does. Therefore, conclusion Killing is not morally much worse than letting die. Now, since the killing slash letting die distinction was the entire basis for the euthanasia distinction, Rachel concludes then that active euthanasia is not much worse morally than passive euthanasia. So that's Rachel's argument. Now let's go ahead and on our next slide, let's talk some more about harm. We've talked about this in previous lectures, about what does harm mean and when are we actively or passively harming another. Let's take another look at this topic.